Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. This time on Voice of the Sea, we spend the day at the University of Hawaii at Manoa's SOEST Open House. SOEST is the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology, and every two years they open their laboratories and workspaces to school groups and the general public. I talked to SOEST researchers who shared their knowledge of earthquakes, volcanoes, waves, and the sounds of the sea. What is your research like <coughs> on a daily basis? Um, the stuff that I focus on mostly is looking at how waves and currents lose energy as they flow over corals. Oh. Corals are a very rough surface and they're very effective at dissipating energy. So that's one of the basic problems we're looking at. And we use Remus and some of the other tools that we talked about um, to uh, try to get an understanding of how, exactly how much energy is lost. It's an important piece of information if you're developing a numerical model, for example, on uh, coastal erosion or coastal inundation. How much energy do the waves lose as they move across the reef? Our, uh, uh, our Remus 100 Autonomous Underwater Vehicle. Um, it's basically, to, especially to the kids, we, we explain this as a robot. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's, a, um, it's an underwater robot. It has a number of computers inside it, and we program those and tell it basically where we want it to go. It has a number of sensors on it. it has a, this is an acoustic Doppler velocimeter, or a current profiler that it uses to measure a couple things. It uses it to measure how fast it's going, and it also uses it to measure how fast the water's going. Okay. This is a CTD, which it uses to measure temperature and salinity, and also mm -hmm. depth. Uh, also has uh, an altimeter on the front that measures how high it is above the bottom. A camera in the very front, and if you look on the screen back there behind you, you can see some of the uh, videos that we've taken from uh, the camera mounted on the nose. Uh, it has a side scan sonar. The side scan sonar essentially sends out pulses of sound that it uses to illuminate with sound the bottom, uh -huh. and then it listens to what it gets back and it builds a picture of the seabed from Very that. Very cool. Okay. Um, positioning, it uses GPS at the surface, it's a GPS antenna. Underwater, it positions by using uh, triangulation, um, using <laughs> transponders. <clears throat> uh, so it, it um, we place out transponders at different places around the ocean and then it sends out pulses of sound to the various transponders and uses those to find its position in the ocean. Okay? <clears throat> Sorry. It's all right. You can imagine you've been doing this all day. <laughs> um, this is a, uh, a custom built uh, kind of an item? Well, no, this one you can actually buy uh, from a company called Hydroid <laughs> out in Massachusetts. Um, and uh, its primary purpose was for the Navy. They use it for uh, seabed mapping, ideally to find um, uh, mines, uh, buried mines and sediments. But we use it for scientific uh, purposes, and there's a number of uh, other institutions that use these sort of vehicles to go places that you can't normally go otherwise. And did you outfit with a lot of this gear? Some of it we've added ourselves, um, like the altimeter, the camera. Uh, the company has done this for us. We've added the CTD on it. Normally it comes without, it's about maybe this long, and it doesn't have the CTD on the top. An expensive okay. piece of technology It's not cheap to operate? Not cheap. It's it, it's a bit pricey to even to maintain, but um, uh, probably a lot cheaper than sending out a ship to do these types of surveys, for example, right? Okay. Can you deploy it from shore then? We can deploy it from shore. We typically deploy it from small boats. You can deploy it from a whaler, go uh -huh. offshore and deploy it from a whaler. We have a 27-foot boat that we go out and we do missions off of. So you're sort of locally famous for the Kilo Nalu Observatory. Right, is right. Is this part of that? This is. We use, so the Kilo Nalu is a cable observatory. We have a cable that goes offshore to a node where we plug in instruments and we measure uh, water properties, wave characteristics, currents at one point. Uh -huh. Okay, so that tells us a lot about what's happening at that one location. This we use to extend that in space. Right, because that the Kilonalu only tells us what's going on right there. Uh -huh. When we put out Remus, it gives us a picture of what's happening over a larger scale in space. 
And okay. so the one of the really really neat things about Kilo Nalo is that the data is available freely. Right. I can go, the public can go online yep. and access it. Can we get the Remus data? Too? Remus data for some of the missions is also on the Kilo Nalo webpage. There's a link for AUV surveys, wow. and those are run as part of the Hawaii Ocean Observing System, and we carry out surveys of the South Shore, trying to map out changes in water quality. How long can this uh, stay out at sea for? It's a good question. Um, it depends on mostly how long we can stay out, because usually we want to stay out and monitor it, at least have a couple of people. Uh, it can go out as long as 20 hours, 20 hour missions, which is a little bit long to sit out in a whaler bouncing around. Uh -huh. um, typically our missions are between maybe two and eight hours. Okay. And I missed the very first sentence of the whole thing, this is our blank, what is it? So can you tell me what oh, this instrument is? This is uh, an autonomous underwater vehicle. Um, it's basically a robot. And how do you drive it? How does it know where to go? Um, it, so the, the AUV has a number of computers on board, and we interface with those computers uh, before the mission, program it, tell it basically where we want it to go, and then it uh, finds its position using GPS, also using acoustics underwater. Uh, has a compass on board, some tilt uh, motion sensors. Send it out, and it finds its way and does what we ask it to do. Hopefully. And then, how do you get it back? It's a good question. So, uh, part of the programming is we program it where we want it to finish the mission, okay. and we monitor it during the mission, make sure everything is going okay, and then we go and wait for it, basically, and it just comes up to the surface and, and we fish it out. Monitor? Do you mean you watch it? No, we use sound, and in fact, what you see right there, that is what we call the fish. It's a transducer uh -huh. and on the bottom there. It's basically an underwater um, microphone and speaker. Okay, so it's got a hydrophone, and we, sorry, buddy, let me get past you here. This is uh, one of the ways that we monitor it. When it's at the surface, we can communicate with it by Wi-Fi. Okay, so it has a Wi-Fi antenna. When it's underwater, we use this, and this has an acoustic modem in it, and I can, for example, I can range to it. I can ask it, how far are you? And I send a, a ping, and then it pings back, and from that I can determine how far it is. Here it says it's zero meters, right, because it's right next to us. But in the ocean, it'll tell us I'm 1,000 meters away or whatever. It also sent, has an acoustic modem transmitter on it. It transmits data, and then from the ranger here, I can say uh, what... The last message was 100 minutes ago, because it's been sitting there for a while. It tells me its position. It tells me uh, what its leg it's on. It's on leg zero of the mission. Batteries are at 20%. Speed is zero knots. Heading, depth, etc. <laughs> See? Very so cool. all of that it's telling us during the mission. And by a <clears throat> ping, you meant a, a sound wave. It sends out a sound wave. So I, if I do that again, you can sort of hear it. There's a very quick tick. Right? And that tick can actually travel a long ways underwater, several kilometers, and this guy will answer back. And how long it takes it for it to answer back tells me how far away it is. Okay? Because sound <clears throat> travels very well in water. It travels very well, and that's why we use sound underwater. Light doesn't travel as well. We can't use light like we use in the atmosphere uh -huh. to send signals out radio waves. We use sound underwater. One of the things that we've used it for is looking at internal waves on the South Shore. There's a lot of things that we've been using, a lot of different applications, but um, we've been able to see very large internal waves traveling along the South Shore. So internal waves are waves that occur in between changes in density uh, or temperature salinity in the ocean. And using our uh, autonomous underwater vehicle, we've been able to observe these very large waves that can have amplitudes of many, many meters uh, in the coastal zones, in some places, it can be hundreds of meters, hundreds of meters of waves uh, that are generated by tides and around the Hawaiian Islands. And those actually break on the shore? They break. You don't see them. These occur under the surface, uh -huh. right? But essentially, you have uh, cool, cool, salty water comes up on the shelf and goes back down. And you don't even see any signal of this at the surface, except that if you're diving, for example, you might see a very... Uh, sharp change in temperature. Uh -huh. Those are these internal waves washing up on the shore. And, and what <coughs> impact do they have? Well, they're important for uh, corals, for example, because they can serve to mitigate things like global war, or like like heating, right? So the things that cause uh, coral bleaching, for example. Sure. Some people argue that that uh, 
can be mitigated by uh, internal, internal waves washing up uh, cold water on the shelf. Um, in addition, there, these deep water, deep waters associated that are uh, washed up by the uh, internal tides also are high in nutrients, uh -huh. right? So those also potentially have effects on, on corals. And um, <clears throat> how did you get interested in the study of fluid mechanics and ocean movement? Um, mostly just wanting to be around the ocean. Uh, I wanted to do, you know, things that had to do with science, but I also wanted to be around the ocean. Uh -huh. And so somehow you, you know, find some way that, to do both of them together. The University of Hawaii's Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii's Sea Grant. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG has been providing quality educational programs and services for over 40 years, serving students, teachers, parents, educators, and experts around the world and here in Hawaii. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is a dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. Teaching ocean science concepts through the disciplines of physics, chemistry, biology, and ecology. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now available freely online. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. Turn your love of the ocean into a lifelong career. Join NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as we unlock the secrets in the deep oceans, track rapidly moving storms, model climate trends, protect and preserve our marine resources, and so much more. It's all in a day's work at NOAA. Find a career that makes a world of difference, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship. NOAA.